It's week, it's week 14 of the golfing calendar. And it's a big one. The Nationals run and won. And the US Masters is nearly here. And we'll cover it all. Now, live from the Australian Golf Centre, Nick O'Hearn and Mark Allen. This is Talk Birdie to Me. Are we ready to go? Thank so you. when are we doing this master special, by the way? Well, are we doing it? Oh, absolutely. Ex- extra content this week. Uh, Thursday morning? Th- Thursday we've got to do it, yeah. Are you busy just, on Thursday morning? No. Well, I'll be, Can you check your diary? If, if the Masters is coming out, I'll, I'll be, oh, that's <laughs> Friday morning. But we're going to do it the day before it all starts. Okay. Yeah, for sure. So we've got a master special. We're doing Mika tomorrow as well. Yes. No, Mika. Sorry, we're doing this now. Mika on Wednesday. Masters on Thursday. Thursday, yeah. Right. We're going to have that, three in a row. David Michalusi, bang, bang, bang. by the way, who's oh. just won our Order of Merit. Uh, if this is actually being recorded, Dan, are we on? Yeah, we're on. Did, okay, did, are okay. you saying he hey. finally, did he return your phone call? <laughs> finally, <laughs> we've got him. We've got him. <laughs> <laughs> Took a while. But I don't think he checked messages for a while. He sent me a message today. Oh, great. Yeah, he apologised okay. three times, oh, well which done. I appreciate. Oh, that's good. <laughs> hey, we, we both saw the national tournament. Uh, we were both uh, commentating, of course, and mm. we saw one of the most crazy front nines of golf I've seen in Australian golf ever in my entire life. We might talk about it a little bit later. Yep. But you saw something... Yes. That I still can't believe, and it's not how good Tom Por- Power Horn was. Not his holy one either. Yeah. I can believe holy ones. I can believe thirties on the front nine. I can believe a twenty under score at uh, the Mooney Course at the National. I can't believe the way he marks his golf ball. <laughs> I Nick. thought you were going to go with that one. You, <laughs> I think you were having a break at that stage. I was. It was, it was I was having a sandwich. And Stacey, and Stacey looked at me and was gone. What did he just do? And I thought. Yeah, uh, that looks strange. Hang on. So we got the replay on the coverage, and sure enough, he's marked his ball, and he's playing with Lucas Higgins, yeah. and rather than, you know, one putter head, two putter heads to yeah. the side, he took an entire club length. <laughs> he took 35 <laughs> inches. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that in local, you know, you play yeah. with your mates, all that stuff. I've never seen that in a professional golf tournament, and we did get it checked, and apparently it is legal. So what would the thinking be? I mean... Uh, one cl- one putter head width, then the two if it's kind of in the way, but a full shaft. Yeah, but when you think about it, it's actually much easier than a putter head because the that? putter head, you kind of have to stand over it and you're trying to line it up and you're looking <laughs> over there, whereas a full club length, you just squat down, yeah, I've got my line, bang, put it there, easy. I reckon it's easier than a than a putter head. So you can point the whole shaft at the target, Yeah, not the hole, but the target so you can mark it back. And you think that's easier? I think that's actually easier. This may be a revolutionise the way we all <laughs> right, eh? move our marker on the in professional golf tournaments. Can I tell you a story about <laughs> marking balls? Right? Okay, please. So when I was my first year on the Nike Tour, so that's the KFT Tour or the Corn, Corn Ferry, Ferry Tour a million years ago, 1994, I was doing the two putter head putter widths, yep. but I was just doing it from four feet. And I've never aimed the blade at something that's off the green. I always just aim the blade at the hole. Like I do when I putt. <laughs> really? Yeah. So you were going away and then coming back. So I just go. I've never seen that. So I just put it down. And if, if the hole's over here, if it's the Sprite can, I just kind of aim my putter up like I'd be going at the Sprite can. Oh, okay, right. And then I put the marker down, then I do another one. So it's almost a bit of a semicircle. So it's a, it's a creeping <laughs> semicircle, right? Oh. But I've always done it that way. Anyway, a rules official saw it. He came over and said, what did you just do? And I told him. And he goes, I'm not sure you're allowed to do that. And I said, hang on a second. I'm a professional golfer and I'm aiming my putter at the hole twice. Once there and once there. Yeah. I think I'm better than that than aiming the nose of the putter at something that's 40 feet away and off the green. Well, the trick is is you pick something about three or four feet away in that regard to the side and you aim at that because that's much easier to look at. I'm doing it my way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and was it legal? Yes, you walked he away. Let you off. Oh, okay. yeah, I said, mate, I'm a professional cool. golfer. I'm aiming at yeah. the hole. What, leave no, me alone. I'm still thinking of people, the listener at home, thinking, where the hell's the Sprite can? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's on the desk. <laughs> oh, What's true. the strangest thing you've seen somebody mark a ball with? Now, I played with a kid once, and it wasn't long ago, and he used his mobile phone all day. It was just the Wednesday comp. But he used the point of his, you know, his rectangle, but he'd, Point the mobile phone. Yeah, he used a mobile. Oh, he used his mobile phone. And I said, "You're not going to do that all day." I said, "I'll give you a coin." He goes, "No, I always do it." And I said, "Why do you always do it?" He goes, "Well, it's just so handy." 
<laughs> now, he would be moving that a putter shaft <laughs> yeah, away yes. if he's in someone's line. Well, it's crazy. It, it never got in the way. You know, really? you'd, you'd, you'd swear it'd get in the way at some it stage. It didn't hit any of the other balls or anything? No. Nah, that's Never got in anyone's way for the day. Oh. I was waiting for it to happen because I was going to pay out on the poor oh, kid yep. and give him an absolute, <laughs> you know, bath, and it never happened. I've seen the old poker chip and things like yeah. that, which are really too big and too white. Keep something a little flatter, but no, a mo- mobile phone. A mobile phone. That is bizarre. Yeah, it, was, okay. it wasn't like the mini mobile phone. Eh? It was a big one. <laughs> <laughs> Kids done well. Uh, anyway, what a great event down at the national, by the way. Tom Powerhorn. <laughs> Didn't he play well? Him and Lyris got off to that start. Lyris, he's a shot behind and he goes birdie eagle to start. Yep. And then he also birdies the third. Yep. So he's three under – no, hang on. He's four under through three. Four Tom under Power, through three. Tom Powell Horan pars the first, chips in for eagle on the second, birdies three and four. He's four under through four. Yeah. It was unbelievable golf. It was – And then – It was sparkling. And then the commentator's curse came. Now, no, I don't call it the commentator's <laughs> curse. Okay. Oh. Here we go. Okay, let, let's tell everybody. Okay. So we had a plan, right, um, Dan? We had a plan. So what we do, and it's great. And this is awesome. The PGA TV do it. And, you know, we've, we've seen it overseas and it's working here. We give people ear, 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 AirPods, AirPods and they talk to us. So they hit a drive and we go, why do you hit it down the left? What are you thinking on this hole? Talk us through the hole. Brilliant. Talk us through the hole. Right? It's fantastic. But there's been a couple of times where they take the earpods out and we really want to hear what they're saying to exactly. their caddy. Yeah. So Nick goes in our production meeting beforehand, okay, I'll handle this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I got it. I got it. I yeah. got this. Yeah. And anyway, it's all happening. I can see he's got his hand up in the corner. I go, yeah, all right, no worries. And what do you do? You go, can you leave him in? And the guy well, goes, I, I just said to him for the first – he drove it in the bunker, which is fine. fine. I said, look, if you don't mind, leave the AirPods in. We'd love to hear what you talk to your caddy about, which he did. He hit a nice shot out, no yeah. problem at all. And it was Walk, great. Walking to the ball, the third, uh, to, to watch his next shot. And I'm thinking, <laughs> right, I'm in there again. Okay, Tom, can you – do you mind leaving him in again? We'd love to hear. And he said, yeah, no problem no at all. Worries. And he's chatting away to his caddy saying, oh, well, you know, I've got this line between eight and yeah. nine. And he, he kind of hits a pull draw. But he didn't <laughs> think it was that bad. Neither did we because we couldn't see where it finished. It goes into the worst possible spot. <laughs> you couldn't believe where he it has went. He flushed the ball for five and a half holes and then all of a sudden he makes his first birdie on the – sorry, six and a half holes because yeah. this was on seven. Yeah. Made his first bogey. Mo- mo- made his first bogey. Stand corrected, and I'm just feeling. It wasn't. No, it wasn't a normal bogey. It was a really like he couldn't have hit it in the worst spot, and you should have seen Nick. He was green. Oh, it was <laughs> he, he, I, was I like, looked oh, over no. at him, and I've got a smirk on my face. Look at that good says. I'm looking at him, and I can just see you felt sick oh, in yeah. your guts. So did. did you? Did you feel that you might have contributed slightly to him well, losing concentration? Yes, may, yeah. maybe he got out of his normal routine because he's, yeah, yeah, he's yeah, probably a quiet person. So, but he was talking. No, we're not yeah. talking. He couldn't hear yeah. us. He's just talking to his caddy. Yeah. But then the magic happened. He just pulled his nine iron. Shocking shot on this seventh hole. Disgraceful. Makes bogey. Next hole, the eighth marker, you, you run it through. Got the 9-9 nine nine out again. Well, he's last to hit. We've just seen a couple of ordinary shots. He makes a swing, and I can tell he likes it because he can just tell. And it lands two yards short, jump, jump, roll, straight in oh, the hole. Oh, wow. <laughs> straight in the hole. So I, I know why you're feeling green. I was pumping the money. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was celebrating that. It's like, yes. You were doing cartwheels. Absolutely. In the studio. But I understand what you felt because the golf that we were watching was off the charts. Yeah, it was sublime. It was outrageous what they were both doing. And you're right. Here he is. Not only is he playing a final round where he's on fire, but he's also leading this tournament and trying to fend off – another character who is on fire. And in that situation, he was good enough to put the AirPods in not once, but twice. Well, he just left them in the whole way, which is, yeah. which is what we're after. It was a long hole, a par five, the seventh of the national. But in the end, it all worked out perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> it really did. Yeah, it Have did. you guys ever had that sort of stuff when you were playing? No. So I, I, back at the Australian PGA Championship about four or five years ago when, when I was yeah. coming back to Australia a little bit before we moved permanently, I was mic'd up for the first two rounds. Is that the PGA? At the yeah, Royal, Pines. They, Royal Pines. They actually mic'd me up where they put the, you know, the, the pack in the back and I had it all hooked up wise. It was so a it, brick, wasn't it? It I wasn't saw really it. comfortable, but I said, well, I'm not really playing full time anymore. If it's going to help the TV, 
I'll go right ahead and do it. Tell them what happened. First round, I'm playing beautifully. <laughs> I'm like talking, you know, to, oh, this is what I'm going to do here. I'm setting it up through six or seven holes. I mean, I'm just on fire. Oh, I don't know what he's doing. He's eight ball in the corner pocket <laughs> yeah. style stuff. And he's, was, and he's coming off. I was really surprised because I hadn't really done much practice. I hadn't been playing well. I'm thinking, you beauty. And then the guy <laughs> comes up to me. And he says, oh, we just need to uh, take that off you because we need to take, you know, change batteries and all this. Next shot, out of bounds. Oh, no! <laughs> I didn't know Triple that. Triple bogey. I'm thinking, oh, just give me that back as soon as I could. I loved it. It was actually fun. Well, it's fine. Now I know because there was a couple of times when we were talking in commercial break where you thought it was going to really help because it, it's, it gets them to actually zero in yeah. on what they're trying to do. Now, is this one of the, your principles? I know you've written a couple of fantastic mm. books, mm. but I, I know it's all about how to play and how to think. Yeah. So this must be one of your pillars. So, well, it, it, it's part of it. it. It depends on your personality. And Tom Powerhorn, as you know, watching yep. him, he's probably not the most outgoing one. So I was a little bit sceptical with him with the AirPods. I have a feeling he's pretty quiet on the course mm. with his caddy. So I wasn't sure if it was going to work out too well. And as it turned out, it probably didn't. But for yeah. players who love to talk, I always say to people, look, if you're one of these outgoing people, yeah. verbalise your shots. Even if it's to your playing partners, oh, I'm just going to hit this seven on the left edge of the green, going to fade it in. They love that stuff. Mm. And when you do that, you get more involved with the shot and then you play better golf for sure. So it's actually a really good thing. If you're a very outgoing person, just start talking to yourself out mm. there. And some people may think you look a little crazy, but it really helps your golf game. Now, if you're the opposite and you keep it in you know, more of a quiet internal person, then that's probably not going to be in your comfort zone and Maybe that's what happened with Tom, but hey, it all worked out. He got the hole in one. It was perfect. Yeah, it was. It was ridiculous. It was yeah. very good golf. Uh, can we just speak quickly while we're on the, the national tournament? Mm. Uh, well done to everybody down there because the course looked fantastic. It, it was a very, very, very good week of golf to watch. And also just some of the other periphery stuff that was happening. Michaluzzi again goes crazy. And was Sunday he nine under at one stage? I think he bogeyed late coming in, shot the 64. That kid, the opportunity he's got now that he is the Order of Merit winner, and it's a little bit different from the other two, Pal Horn and Andrew Martin, to where he can actually sit down mm. and know, I'm going to this tournament, this tournament, this tournament. The others have to kind of wait and see what happens. I, I, I've got no qualms about this kid going yeah. incredibly well. No, his confidence is at an all-time high. I can't wait to talk to him in our, in our bonus uh, pod, which is coming out this week as well. Coming but out Wednesday. There was some other little backstories going on. Remember we are talking about Lucas Higgins. Oh, he was trying yeah. – he needed to finish top seven to keep his tour card. But the one we missed, I didn't actually realise at the time I saw it on social media, Michael Wright – hold a 40-footer yeah. on the last for yeah. birdie yeah. to bring him inside the top 50. So he kept his tour card. What? Righty. You know, oh, righty. Right. Righty hold the 40-footer. 40 40-footer 40 for birdie on the last, and that got him in the top 50. Oh, that's a great story. At the time, we, we couldn't do the calculations and all the math, but as as they re updated the order of merit after the telecast, it all came out. And, um, I mean, how good is that? Remember mm. what he did on 14? He three-putted from like five feet. He did too. He three-putted yes. from five feet yep. to make a double on that hole. And we wrote him off. Mm. It was just, it was done. Oh, what a great story. Yeah, really good. Can we quickly look up where uh, Lucas finished up? Lucas Higgin? Uh, did he, did was, he finish in the he top 70? He was in the top 60, maybe 57, something like okay, that. Okay, so I, he's I okay. He, well, he's in that next category, so he will get some starts, I believe. But also Hayden Barron won Rookie of the Year, played some great golf throughout yeah, the did. season. Obviously, all the focus is on uh, Michaluzzi, but the top three who got their DP2 World Cards was Michaluzzi, uh, Tom Powerhorn, and Andrew Martin. They've got to play yeah. a full season next year in Europe, which is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, can we talk about Bradley Hughes? I mean, last year, one of his students, Bride McPherson, had a stellar sort of year. He was always up there. A couple there. of years ago. Yeah, yeah. playing well. And we saw him doing the same sort of uh, pre-shot yes. rehearsal that we saw through. Tom Power Horan doing. Um, the no backswing yeah. uh, pr practice swing. It's, it's yeah, very yeah. interesting, now, isn't it? Now, Brad Hughes was listening. Oh, he was? Yeah, he was Great. listening to us and, and watching one of his students. And he sent me this... Message. Go ahead. Hugo's a great bloke. Love listening to what he has to say. People often forget golf is a target game. Now this is this is in this is how he thinks about hitting the ball. And damn, believe me, Bradley Hughes was one of the best hitters of a golf ball I've ever seen, ever in my life. And and when he turned pro, there were literally caddies fighting over each other 
to who was going to caddy for this bloke. Oh, I think his first round shot 62 or something over there. He won a West Australian Open on the way over and he was a freak. Anyway, he sent this. And this is his teaching philosophy. People often forget golf is a target game. Everything is in front and left of us, so having the correct intent over there will often solve any issues of backswing and downswing. If you know where you are going, then the other stuff will match to correspond and help you get there. Now, this is obviously for people who are reasonably coordinated, mm. okay? If, you, if you're not so coordinated, I'm not sure this is going to work for you. Okay. But if, if you are, if you can react to a ball, this may well do. The post-impact is important. So this is talking about what these players are doing. So it's a, they basically do a rehearsal of their golf swing, but they start at impact and they just make a follow-through. It helps from over-accelerating the shaft. The golf ball likes acceleration of the club rather than pure velocity and speed. Increasing the club's acceleration rate gives the player a chance to hit with not only the club head, but the entire club. It creates feel in the hands for the longer the longer the swing and feel is the lifeblood of a good golfer and it goes on. I'll just read that this the half of it. The quote that I loved was that the golf ball loves acceleration mm. through impact. I love it. That's Everything I heard then was really good. My old coach, uh, Neil Simpson, he always used to tell me, look, don't hit at the ball. I want you to hit through the ball. Mm. So I was actually, you know, as a left hand, I'm looking to the right where the yeah. club goes on my follow through. He said, find that position out there. So it's kind of in a similar way to what Brad's talking about. I love everything he's saying there. That's yeah, really yeah. good. And, and, and I also reckon, you know, the double cross, I'm absolutely sure that when your body stops, the club keeps yep. whizzing through and that's where you get the double cross from. And how many times did we see double crosses? We saw Lyra do it a number of times. And obviously, uh, when you jinxed him uh, with the earpods in, <laughs> that was a double cross as well. Well, he was trying to hit the draw. <laughs> no, he just pulled it too much. <laughs> so so I reckon just that, that acceleration through, not only does it accelerate the club head, he's talking about, ex- you know, with that rehearsal, they accelerate their body through impact as well. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tweet out the message. I've asked him whether I could do it or not. I'll, I'll tweet out what he sent me. I love it. And I'm also going to tweet out one of the best golf swings you'll ever see. This is Bradley Hughes warming up. Oh, I think yeah. it was at Royal Queensland at one yeah. stage. You just you just won't yeah. believe the pure acceleration. Another bloke who was awesome at it too, Tom Watson. Yes. His acceleration through impact was just yeah. off the charts. Uh, Hugo was an absolute flusher, as we call him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dimmy Papadatis, I know we're doing this a little bit later. No, that's okay. Let's Can we get do into it, now? it. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I, I sent you a message. Mark, yeah. Dimmy's in a playoff. He yeah. might be able to win. Corn yeah. Ferry Tour, they're playing in Santiago, Chilean Classic, something yeah. like that. And uh, Ben Cole, he, he had the clubhouse lead. Ben Coles, I think, made a late bogey and he had to birdie the last. And he, he did. Into a playoff, got it up and down. Yeah. Both birdied the first playoff hole. Yeah. And this would mean, I mean, this is, this is Dimmy's first Corn Ferry tour start yeah. ever. Do you know the significance of what's going on over there? Go on. So that Coles bloke. Yep. His very first start on the Corn Ferry tour five years or so ago. Right. He won. He won. <laughs> he won. <laughs> so he was up against another guy. Who was trying to win. Who was trying to win Jeez. in his very first. And the cards just oh. didn't fall our way. Yeah, where's karma? I mean, that should. It just didn't fall our way. Uh, but a great result for him. That gets uh, – I think he has status from being in the final stage mm. of the Q school over there. So his status wasn't great starting the season. And, I mean, a lot of the Corn Ferry players, I'm not sure they want yep. to go all the way down to Chile. So that's probably how he got the start. And uh, he'll definitely be in the next event. He moves into the top 20 on the re-rank now. Mm. And that really – top 30 by the end of the year, you get your PGA Tour card. So yeah. great first step. Hey, it is Masters Week and we are doing a Masters Special and that Masters Special is going to be coming out on Thursday, so keep uh, keep your eye open for that one. Mm. But there was news today that I want to talk to you about. Go on. I had no idea, one, that there was 18 live players contesting in the at Augusta this week. Oh, you didn't know? I thought okay. it was 17. I thought it was about oh, seven. When okay. I in my head, I thought there must be about seven or eight. There's 18 live players. Well, I think at the cutoff at the end of last year, they have two cutoffs. Yep. It's the top 50 in the world, end of last year and a week or so ago, basically. So they're not getting in from this last cutoff because no. they're all way outside the top 50 now. So. so they must be getting in from 
either winning other majors. So if you win a US Open, yeah. you get five years at Augusta. Yep. If you win the PGA, you get five years at Augusta. If you win the Open, you get five yep. years at Augusta. So there'd be some of those yep. sort of things happening uh, and other bits and pieces going yep. around. Anyway, they've got 18. Greg Norman has made it plain today that if a live player wins, all 18 live players in the tournament will be right there and they'll be they'll be doing some kind of thing. Waiting for him coming off the green. I don't know, but there'll be okay. some kind of live celebration. Um, will oh. Greg be there as well? Greg's not welcome. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm curious if he gets – yeah, well, he is a major there champion, he, so he will, should get the invite to go along. I've been listening to lots of stuff today. Okay. <laughs> and I don't think he's going. I think I've heard that, that he's not going. He okay. won't be there. Mm-hmm. But the 18 players, even if they miss the cut, they're going to go back. And let's just say DJ walks off – the seventy second hole, yep. and he's just one. Then they're all going to basically, you know, give him a, a guard of honour. Is that what it is? Yeah, guard of honour. If Liv gets crazy, I think that this, that's going to be a game changer. Oh, I wonder how the Green Jackets will feel about that. I'm not so sure. <laughs> the chairman, what's the chairman's name? Fred Ridley. Fred Ridley. The I'm Riddler. not so. I'm not so sure. Freddie is going to be wrapped mm. if there's some kind of mess production on the seventy second. The one thing I guess. For the non-live players in their favour is mm. not many of these players are coming in with any form. The only guy who really has any form now is Brooks Kepka because he just won uh, in Orlando at Crooked Cat at yeah. Orange County National. I actually used to live 10 or 15 minutes oh, from really? there. Oh, yeah. really? What's the course like? Uh, not that great. So, not that good? No, nah, it's Bermuda and it's the worst preparation possible for Augusta National. However, I heard they really shaved the greens down for him, but it's not that difficult a golf course. And uh, scores are really good. He won by one over Sebastian Munoz, but the Aussies... Ripper, unfortunately, they finished dead last. It wasn't a good week for the Aussies. So uh, the, the Australian team, team finished, finished dead last. Dead last out of the 12, yeah. Cam Smith, 29. Midfield, I saw that. Uh, I think... Uh, uh, Leash, midfield. Leash was the same. But I think out of the big name players from Liv, Reed finished fourth. DJ was seventh. Bryson was 16th. Phil, he's not having a good time. 41st right. and Garcia, 45th. So uh, Phil shot, I think, five over mid-round. Mm. Uh, six under, six under, three under was the winning score. Fifteen under for, 15 for, for, Brooks. for Brooksy. So he's found his game again. And yeah. If you watch the whole full swing Netflix series, he, <laughs> he, yes. was, in, he was in a very dark place, <laughs> especially when he was looking at his wife's clothes in the in the closet. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so my question was going to be: fifteen under at this course translates into uh, what sort of form? Well, who knows? Because what what is this, their third event? Uh, they haven't played a lot of rep, yeah. reps, as they call it, competitive reps. Yep. I mean, I've seen some um, media around Cam Smith saying, no, nah, that, that won't play into it. You know, we'll all be ready. And, and I'm sure they will be. But time will tell. I mean, this week it's going to be fascinating to see how many of the live players actually do make a run at this. And in, if one of them can be donning the green jacket mm. at week's end, that will be something very Unique in the world of golf. If I, they I, did can, that. I can tell you this, and I won't give away uh, what mob it is, but I've, I've got to do this stuff for one of the betting companies this week. Okay. You know, just going to make some money on the side. And what they are asking me to push forward is live players in the top 10. So it's Ooh. a factor, you know. So the fact that they've got a lot of players there, and I think it's, um, it's an under over situation where it's three and a half. So over three and a half players getting the top ten or under three and a half players getting the top ten into Spieth top five into um, two and a half players making the cut from Australia. Right. Something like that. Well, they're making But up- isn't it interesting now that live is a focus for everybody? Oh, for sure. Well, they're making up 20% of the field. There's only like 87 players in the field, I think. There yeah. was one guy who pulled out Aaron Wise for mental health issues and they've got, what, 18? So that's just around 20%. Yeah. So they've got a good chance for sure on um, the under over. I mean, my favourites would have to be DJ. Obviously, Cam's got great history. And yeah. maybe Reed because he just doesn't care what anyone thinks anytime. So He played well, didn't he? Reed, Reed, Reed played Reed quite finished well. finished fourth. Yeah. Kepka, I mean, who knows? He's got obviously good form after the win, but... Gee, it's going to well, be a fun week, isn't just it? Just keep your powder dry, please, because uh, our Masters special, uh, we need to get that moving. Um, well, I reckon you've just signed for a 32. I've signed for a 31, and I'll see you on the 10th take. Sounds good. You're listening to the Talk Birdie Jimmy podcast with Nick O'Hearn and Mark Allen. If you're enjoying the pod, share it with a friend and help spread the word. All right, Mark, hope you had a sandwich and a drink through the turn there. Uh, you had some... 
uh, things you needed to follow up on. What was that again, uh, Graham Marsh? Graham Marsh. We want to get him on, don't we? No, I haven't bothered yet because I knew okay. this was going to be a busy week. Yeah, but Graham, okay. we'll be right. Be... I, I love uh, Graham Marsh, okay. so we'll, we'll get him at some stage. Right. Cool. Means, does that mean you forgot? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, well I, 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 hey, Mark. I apologise. I've got you covered. I've got his number. Have so you? It's all oh, good. good. I've got his number. Well, that, okay. that makes sense. Now, <laughs> uh, tweets to the editor. Uh, let's get moving. <laughs> We had one to, in response to Mark's masterclass on not using the aim line, Wayne 1965. <laughs> There's a lot of A's and Y's in there. He just Thanks, said Wayne. brilliant. And then uh, in response to last week's conversation about whether Jason Day can win the Masters, there's, yeah. there's a ripper there, isn't there? You, you, you take that one away. No, no, he, of course he can from Wayne Cramp. Uh, Mick Lamaro says yes, but Baldy 27. Baldy. Mm. Who cares? When did he last play in Oz or do anything for Oz Golf? Compare his record to Scott, Smith, Leishman, Herbert, Minji and Green. Jason Day is as Australian as Rupert Murdoch. Oh, oh God. Oh, wow. Jeez. Goodness me. Oh, there's a yeah. whack. Well, I tell you. We he, would like to see him back every once in a while, though. Well, he's, uh, he's looking good, Mr Day. Yeah. He's got some form coming in. and uh, Just on the, the line thing that Wayne was talking about, mm-hmm. we spoke about this somewhere else. But we've just seen what's happening in baseball. Oh, yeah, where they've short, been able to shorten the, the games. So if you're not up to date with baseball, what they have done, games were going three and a half, four hours of disaster. And what they did, they put a shot clock on the pitcher. Now games are going one hour shorter. Now you and I both agree mm. that if you get rid of the line, aiming line on the golf ball, I reckon you'll save 15 minutes off oh, yeah. local rounds. Yep. But in professional rounds, how long do you reckon? Uh, yeah, probably something, maybe 20 minutes. I maybe 20? Well, you've got that and then you've also got... Aim point. <laughs> aim point. Straddling the line. Oh, yeah. I saw... I saw now, you. explain what you said, okay, mate. Okay, so I saw a young kid this morning on the... Drive pit and... Uh, drive... What, what is putt, it called? Uh, drive chip and putt. Yes, at Augusta. Because at Augusta. They, they do this thing for the kids that they can all come out who has the longest drive, who gets closest to the pin with and a the chip putt. and then a putt. It's obviously. really good. Oh, it's it's really fantastic. Great. It's, and I saw this kid straddling the line all the way down about he was he was it was as though he was looking for somewhere to go to the toilet. Yeah. I mean it was just <laughs> It was. It was bizarre. And the other thing is, I mean, there have probably been about twenty kids before him that hit the putt. Just watch yeah. those. Just look at use your eyes. Yeah. I mean it's amazing. So, How old are these kids? Oh, he would have been uh, probably ten. Nine oh, or ten. Yeah. So good. Ten years old. So good. But so, they're doing what they see on the T V and, and that's, that's right. what's the pros do. So the whole reason I asked you this question, if we got rid of the line on the ball and <laughs> we got rid of the straddling. He's straddling not allowed to have a, a, either foot, uh, either side of your own line. Yep. How much time do you reckon we would save no. in professional golf per round? Half an hour, mate. Half an hour. Yep. I'm with you. I was going to say half Good, an hour. Well. 30 hours. minutes. Yeah, I think so as well. So the follow-up question to all those two questions, is it worth it? And the answer is it's a no-brainer. Of course. Yeah, it's an absolute no-brainer. The pros probably won't agree because they, they love it, obviously, and it's helping their games. But no. Or is it? That's the thing. Well, that's, that, well, that's right. Or You'll never it? know. You will never know. It was like the so, shot clock. The shot clock yeah. masters, the tournament in Europe, they scored better. Yep. And every single round was under four hours. I yeah. think there might have been one towards the end yeah. that might have crept over four. And this is professionals in threes. Yeah. It was 20, 25 minutes faster, I think. The, the, but unrealistic, of, isn't it? It's, it? You can't have a shot clock for every group. They're going to struggle with Thursday it. Thursday and Friday. Mm. Uh, a disaster. Time for the results, Nicholas. Okay, so speaking of uh, Augusta National, I know we've got the Masters special coming, but they had the Anwa event, which yes. is the uh, Augusta, Augusta National, National Women's, Women's Amateur. Amateur. Yep. Uh, Rose Zhang won in a playoff from Jenny Bay. She had a five-shot lead playing the last round. So the first two rounds is played at this course called Champions Treat. Yep. Sorry, not treat, retreat. Retreat. Uh, down, the, down the road. It's about you know half. the story about that course? No, tell me. So it's 27 holes, one designed by Nicholas, mm-hmm. one nine designed by a player, one nine designed by Arnold Palmer. Okay. There we go. Wow, Almost there you forgot go. Arnie. Or well, maybe they do a composite. That's why they call it, yeah. <laughs> so there's three retreat. nines there. Oh, that's great. So yeah. they play the first two rounds there, and then the final round is played at Augusta National. So Rose had a five shot lead. Unfortunately, she played awful. The what she should 76. 76. She's the number one amateur in the world, yeah. too. Yeah, she ended up winning in a playoff over Jenny Bay and another American. So great for her. However, from on the Aussie front, oh, it was cruel. But Bozio? Justice Bozio, three putts the last. For what? After 36 holes to miss the cut oh, by one. Oh, she did not. Mm. I saw she made a six 
on a par five to finish. That was it. She hit a wedge on to about 30 or 40 feet, apparently oh. left the first one four or five feet short and then oh, missed it. So that was no. her chance to play at Augusta Well, she got a practice round. All the girls got a practice round oh, early. Okay, yeah, she got okay. a practice oh, round, good. so she got to see it. Right. But still... Mm. You want to be there on the last Oof. day, Justice. Uh, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. But well, anyway. She's, she's, she's one of my favourites. She'll next be good. Year. Unless no. she turns pro, I guess. So, All right. Uh, on the PGA Tour, we had the Valero Texas Open yes. Canadian Corey Connors. He He's only had yep. one win on tour at this event yep. four years ago. Yep. And he was a Monday qualifier when he did that. Yep. Yep. And he's had a heck of a career. Played President's Cup and you know, top 50 player in the world at one point. Uh, he... Uh, ended up uh, winning by one shot from Sam Stevens. The last hole was fascinating to me because yeah. I watched him on 17 where he drove it in the in the greenside bunker, hit a beautiful bunker shot, didn't quite get out. And yeah. then on 18, he's sort of pulled his second. He, he was so close to the green, there's this no Stevens. point in laying up. No, this is um, Corey. This is Corey Connors. Yeah. He only needs to make part of win because Stevens didn't make birdie in front of him. He's too close to lay up. So right. he has to go for it. Knocks it in the back left bunker and that is not an easy bunker shot. And I he's, saw it. He's on a downside. He's too. given a bit, a bit of the old chunk and run D cell. You know, it wasn't a good bunker shot. And I want to talk a little bit. I'm going to talk about this in the masterclass, and this is what I'll be posting later on. But uh, we saw also going back to the national. Yeah. I'll tell you what, John Lyris, his bunker shot on the last. The speed he created was yeah. incredible, and and unfortunately for Corey, the speed wasn't there on this bunker shot. But it was a great win for him. Uh, the Aussies, unfortunately, there was only two playing. Cam Davis, how's this? He shot 80, 66. <laughs> 14 shots better to miss the cut oh by two, God. unfortunately. My God. Uh, and Harrison Endicott, he missed as well. Um, yeah. On the women's side of it, the LPGA Tour, China's Ronin Yin won in her 20th start as a pro. She's a 20-year-old. Yeah, great yep. win over Georgia Hall, who yes, is now runner up two, two, two weeks in a row. And if you – I don't know if you saw it, but she had a putt to get in the playoff from about six feet on the last for birdie. She does the – she must have the line on the ball because yes. she's got that. But then she also gets the shaft up to oh, line no. that ball up. So the shaft lining, we've talked about plumb balling. Plumb, plumb balling, plumb this hopping. is shaft lining. <laughs> shaft lining. <laughs> shaft <laughs> lining. So she was shaft lining oh. after pointing the arrow. Yeah, and then she, the just, she just hit a dead pull. Oh, uh, four, all four Aussies who played made the cut, Hannah Green, uh, Sarah Kemp, Grace Kim and Steph mm. Kiriaki. But there was an interesting little twist within this because they're all – it was between uh, Sarah Kemp and Grace Kim. Mm. Whoever finished higher out of those two in the tournament oh, the team event makes it into the international That's crown it. at That's Harding it. Park. And That's a really good event. Yeah, Sarah Kemp got it by two shots, so she'll be playing alongside uh, Hannah Green, Minji Lee and Steph Kuriaku. So yes, that was, four uh, fabulous Australian names yeah. playing in a tournament like that. I hope they go well. I, I'm sure they will. On the local front, uh, Australian Women's Classic, Brianna Gill defeated Danny Vasquez uh, at Bonville. Yep. Which was a great win for her. Yep. Uh, very and well good. done to the WPGA here in Australia. You've put on a great summer mm. of golf. So good on you. Certainly well done. Did. Karen Lunn, you're a star. Yep, absolutely. Uh, have you got a have you got a you, I know you've got a master class. I have got a master class. However, have you got a top five we've first? We've got a top five this week, and I'm gonna go for <laughs> given it's Masters Week. Yeah. I was gonna save this for the for the bonus points. No, 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 no let's no, do it now. No, okay. No, no, no. Top five masters moments. Oh, Ooh. this is good. Okay. And I mean <laughs> There's so many to choose from. That's the problem. No. Nah. But well, come on. You're you, going to be judged. You, yeah. I'm, you're you're going to be judged on what you deliver and, and, here. And the thing is, you know, one guy in particular, it could be all five, yeah. and, but I'm not going to go there. I'm only going to give one for a, a different person each time, okay? Okay. Number five. So, hang on. So, you can only get in your top five Masters moments once. Once. Right. So, so, Tiger's not going to have two or three in there. He's only oh, going to have fair. one. Well, fair, just to mix fair. it up a little. Fair's fair. Number five. Yep. 2012. Second playoff hole against Louis Eustazen, Bubba Watson's wedge oh. from out of the pine straw, way deep in the trees. I mean, one one of the great things that Augusta does when you go there in practice rounds, they put little flags in places mm. where famous shots are. There's a little flag in that spot, and we're all there watching the year after. It was impossible. Well, what he did. For a right-hander, it's impossible. For a left-hander, maybe you can hit the big hook with a wedge. You I still reckon it was hard. Yeah, I, I know it is. But And Bubba has the you know, one of the biggest imaginations out there, and he curves the ball like you've never seen before. So it was an amazing shot. So Beautiful. Anyway, Bubba. that's number five, Bubba. Number four, this was a heartbreaker for all Aussies. 1987. Oh, don't you dare put Larry Myers in here. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the it's one of the greatest <laughs> moments in, in the Masters history, really. I mean, when you think about it. 
Yes. Norman on Not the, for us, no. No, no. Norman on the 18th hole. Remember that putt that just burned oh. the edge to win in regulation? It was him and Seve and Mize in the Correct. playoff. I mean, you've got Norman and Seve and Mize. And Larry Mize. Who do you think you're going to win? No, it's either Norman uh, or Seve. Yeah, but Seve got eliminated on the first uh, playoff hole and then Mize chipped in. How far, how far past was it going to go? Uh, it was going at reasonable speed, but within 10 feet, I would have said. I reckon, yeah. 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 I reckon he's going to have a, it was a great eight chip. A, a ten footer, but it just went down like All a right. rabbit going down a hole. Okay, number Still three, makes me sick. staying on the Australian, you know, uh, theme here. Yeah. Even though Norman lost, but it's got to be Adam Scott. Yep. But I'm actually not going for the putt that won him the playoff. I'm going to oh. go for the seventy second hole, and he hold it. Yep. You know, it's the yep. putt Norman had in 87. It's yep. the putt we've all seen. Not many people make this putt, and he's made it, and he's given it the big fist pump, yes. and Leishman behind him has given yes. it the come on, Aussie. Beautiful I mean, if photo. that didn't send chills up your spine, that was something Well, else. you've redeemed yourself oh. after Larry Myers at number you. four. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> all right. I could have easily gone for the winning putt on the playoff, but I thought, no. No, no you don't okay. pick cherries, do you? You're good. And one of the great moments, again, there's a couple here I could have picked from, from the great Goldman mm. Bear himself. Jack Nicholas, is it? Rich is bit. it, is it going to be the seventeenth? Maybe. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. I didn't go for that one, <laughs> mainly because I love what happened around it. It was the tee shot the hole before on 16. sixteen, where he he's standing over it. Jim Nance is in the booth and he's just waxing lyrical about yeah. everything. But then he backs away. Yeah. And Nance, I remember him talking about this later. He said. I've used up all my info. So he turns to Tom Weisskopf oh, and he says to Weisskopf, what do you think Jack's thinking right now? And Weisskopf yeah. thinks, it says back to Jim, he says, you know, uh, Jim, if I'd have known that, I would have won a lot of these things already. <laughs> it was one of the best he comments said that, ever. And then he went into the most beautiful dialogue you ever heard. Mm. He said, Jack, you just make the swing. You know you can make. Mm. Stay down, accelerate through the ball. Your destiny is right here. It was pure, wasn't it? No, Very, I, I love the whole narration. If you ever Tom get a chance, go on, go on YouTube. But Jack shot in there on sixteen. I mean, Seve, I mean, he should have won that year. That was yep. eighty six. Seve hit it in the water. Yep. Norman, obviously, you know, missing the shot on eighteen to the right. You know, yep. almost shanked the four iron. It was yep. just horrible. Anyway, but Jack sixteen tee shot, and of course, how could you go past that same hole? It's been declared the greatest shot in Masters history, even though we didn't get footage of Gene Sarazen way back in 1935, but we did get footage of Tiger chipping in on 16 to yep. take a two-shot lead against Chris DiMarco, Yep, and then he bogeys the last two holes, but yep. then he beats him in a playoff. But yep. that chip, remember how it went up the slope? Yep. Vern Lund- Lund- uh, Lundquist. Lundquist goes, have you seen anything in your life? Like yeah. Something like that anyway. Yeah. It was a great commentary. How the how the ball stopped on the edge. The Nike logo just tipped yeah. in. Oh, it was just something. Well, if uh, if Gene Sarazen's forward was the shot heard around the world, mm-hmm. Tiger Woods's chip shot yep. was the shot seen around the world. Yeah, it was incredible. With I was there that year too, and I was back in the clubhouse waiting, and I heard it from the clubhouse. Mm. That's how loud that yeah. roar was. I mean, the whole place shook. It was yeah. a joke. It's right. funny, you know, because I I. I Took people for 15 years. Mm. And one of the things people don't talk about are the acoustics of that place. And, you know, it's where, where um, I mean, corner is, it's so far down the hill. Yeah. And when there's a big roar down there, you can almost hear it coming in waves over the pines all the way back to the clubhouse. It's incredible yes. how it works. Oh, I can't wait to talk about all this stuff in our uh, bonus pod. And by the way, if you want to send us your top five Masters moments, just send it through our socials and you might get a mention next week. In fact, you might even get a mention in our Masters. Uh, this week? Yeah, you might even get it this week. Yeah, perfect. It's time for the Masterclass. I'm a Certainly is. Yeah, this week, again, if you watch the golf on the weekend, both at the National and the Valero Texas Open, I was talking about Corey Connors earlier and his bunker shot and how he decelerated Mm. on his bunker shot on the last hole. He did get away with it, though. He had to tough two-putt down the slope. And uh, at the National, John Lyris, he had a wonderful bunker shot on the last. He had to hold it to try and force a playoff with Tom Power Horn. But the whole idea about the bunkers in this masterclass is – Acceleration. You were mm. talking earlier, Mark, about acceleration that Brad Hughes loves to uh, talk about in the golf swimming, but in bunkers it's so important. Yep. Obviously, you need to set up correctly, uh, a little wider stance, hands point at the belt buckle. Don't get the hands pointing forward mm-hmm. or get any shaft length because we want to expose the bounce. Knees bend a little bit more. Bit more, but then on the backswing and the follow through, want a little bit more his, uh, wrist hinge. Gary Player, he likes to talk about set, uh, lighting the match. 
Mm. I mean, you've ever heard that time yeah, through good. the ball. He's lighting the match. He's really, really accelerating good. through the ball and then following through. I think most golfers out there that do play in your local courses tend to decelerate because they're worried about hitting the ball too far. Don't worry. The club, open the face up, expose the bounce, nice acceleration through the ball, follow through and... I guarantee you're going to hit much better bunker shots and the ball will get out and yep. hopefully not go over the other side of the green. You might even get a little bit of spin with some acceleration. Mm, indeed. Which is the ever the dream. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but they dream about it. I'm going to post a video a little later on about how to do all that as well. Beautiful. Uh, now, don't forget, David Michaluzzi, our Order of Merit winner. We're going to get to him soon. Uh, it's probably going to be tomorrow. Tomorrow. And whatever you do, do not miss our Master Special. It's going to be a ripper. So Catch you next time. Yeah. Nick O'Hearn and Mark Allen's podcast, Talk Birdie to Me. Live from the Australian Golf Centre, home of the PGA of Australia and Golf Australia. Follow us on all the socials. And if you like the podcast, share it with a friend and let them know about Nick and Mark. Talk Birdie to Me's executive producer is Dan Bradley at Kaizen Media. Sound 